everybody! So today I'm just working around the house and I thought I would videotape it because I need to make some videos for you. <laughs> I um, have several things that I work on and I'm putting them all on my YouTube channel. So first of all, for those of you who are fairly new to my channel, you are probably noticing that there's a lot of things that I do here on my channel. And um, you can learn about that as you just, you know, browse around. Uh, one of the things that I like to focus on in my life is preparing food storage. So, I'm going to clean up this hallway that I have here. I have had things sitting there for months and months and months and months. And my husband's tired of looking at them. They're collecting dust. <laughs> we can't fit through the hallway, you know, so it's time. So, I'm going to go ahead and record this. For those of you who have not heard, you know, about food storage, um, you're going to be able to learn about that here on my channel a little bit every once in a while. And for those of you who are familiar with food storage already, you might ask yourself, well, why do I need to come here to get information from Athena? Well, I, I've learned a little bit. Uh, I can just honestly say I guess I would call it a moderate amount. I don't know. And... Um, there are some things I know or the way that I do certain things that other people don't so that you're going to get a variety that way but the one thing that I do offer on my channel and that is unique to me is my food storage recipes okay so you'll see more of that on my channel hill too and please remember to check those out alright so let's get started right now I'm just going to be filling up my bucket with some flour this bucket is what I dip from when I'm doing my cooking at home, when I'm doing my baking and everything. So this is the flour that I rotate through, and it's not the one that I put away for long-term storage, actually. And I like to buy the kind of flour in these big bags, because it is so cheap, and just dump it in my nice little bucket here. This one doesn't have a fancy lid. I, I don't even put it on real tight. I just kind of set it loosely so that I can get in and out of it really easily when it's time for me to do my baking. <clears throat> I was waiting for this to get small enough so that I could fit just a little bit more inside this bucket. This is the easy part. Nothing to it, just pour it in. If you're lucky, you won't make a mess. because you know you're you're putting it in here with all this weight so when I bake sometimes I'll sift the flour just a little bit all right and I for now am going to find a place to put this away where it's easy to get at <clears throat> but not going to be in our way I'll work on that okay this next bucket I'm going to put up here so you can see oh, this is kidney beans and I forgot that I had already put oxygen packs in here. So I opened it up and I went, whoops, so now I have to reseal it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. This is the, the type of lid that we call, well, a gamma bucket lid, I guess, a gamma bucket, gamma lid. <laughs> well, let's, well, I threw away the label. I'll tell you exactly what it's called. The gamma seal lid. There we go. All right. These are a little bit expensive. I think you have to pay about $15 per lid. But the thing that's really, 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 really nice about them is you don't have to get a screwdriver or a putty knife or any of that stuff to pry open your lid. This gets put on there real hard with a hammer. And then the center of it can actually spin. Let's see. Here we go. Which direction? Oh, come on. What's going on? Why isn't it working? Is it stuck tight? Oh, there. Oh, I don't know why it took a minute, but. And then 
two pieces. So this is the part that stays on the bucket, and this is the part that you just open so you can scoop in there when you need to. Really nice. Now, this lid claims to be airtight. That's what they say. They're pretty awesome. So in that case, they're good to use. <laughs> All right. So I went ahead and I opened this. I kind of hang on to the handle right here, and then I spin. There we go. And as you can see, I've got a whole bunch of beans in here and then all my oxygen packs. Uh, it looks like I put extra in here because they were half dead. You're only supposed to put about five in here, and I think I put like ten because they were, they were already halfway used up. Uh, so now I have opened the lid, re-entered a whole bunch more oxygen into this bucket, and that's going to, if I was to leave it like that, it wouldn't last quite as long. Um, these are dry beans, obviously, and if we seal them and make this airtight, they should last like 40 years. Okay, so I have my oxygen packs right here, and I want to show you what I've done to them. What I have learned is that these will only be potent or work uh, within about five times of being exposed to air. Uh, I save them here in this jar, I open it up, and obviously they get exposed to air. I didn't like the way that didn't seal very well. That was weird. Yeah, what's going on with these? Maybe, that's weird. Ugh. Well, I don't know what's wrong with these because they, they don't seem fresh. Well, I'm just going to stick them back in here and assume for the best. I'll have to test them again later. I don't know what's going on. This has been sealed down here, and I have tested these at other times. And like I say, what I have tested is that they can be exposed to air real quick for about five times. And then at that point, they lose their efficiency, and they're no good. You might as well throw them away. Um, get that tight. And, and what I was saying about this is that I write down the date. According to this, I haven't opened these for, what, a year or more? A little over a year? Uh, so they should have been good, just sealed. They should last 10 years or so in this mason jar. Uh, so I'm going to have to test mine and find out what's going on. Um, heads up for all you oxygen absorber people. I have seen everybody doing this. I don't know what happened to mine. They might have been bad in the first place because they can be temperamental. And if you um, leave them exposed to air for too long, if you take them out of the plastic bag that they come in and you, you put them in here thinking that they're good and they're really not, you just... Anyway, I'll have another video for you on how to use oxygen absorbers correctly and effectively. So we'll do that another time. And I'll have another video later on about why to do food storage as well. Anyway, so if these were uh, good oxygen absorbers in here, putting them in this bucket with this gamma lid should allow my dry beans to stay good for like 40 years. So that's awesome. And then this last bucket here, pull off the desk. I don't even think I need to open this one. This one has cornmeal inside of it. And uh, as you can see, there's just a little bit more room in there. So I'm probably going to go and fill this up. But I need to buy some more cornmeal. And I will come back in a minute and sh uh, finish showing you how I do this. It's nothing spectacular. It's simple. That's what I mean. Of course it's spectacular because you're making your food last for such a long time. So much longer than it does in the bags or the boxes that you get from the store. And very convenient in the buckets with these fancy lids. So, yeah, I have to find out where my husband put my other buckets. <laughs> so then I'll be right back.